As a ham and a prepper, I need portable power to run my radio and other equipment out in the field. As a tinkerer, I need a way to measure that current draw so I can see what I'm working with. Portable power stations like Jackery's and EcoFlows do have a 12 volt output, but they're typically limited to 10 amps, and I need more than that in some instances. Power Queen sent me a 50 amp battery that I think will solve that problem for me. It's got a 50 amp BMS, which means I can pull 50 amps for one hour, or certainly less than that. They also sent me a shunt with a, a current meter on it to show what I'm pulling. Now I'm gonna put these together into one package so I can use it out in the field with this $10 toolbox from Home Depot. All right, let's get building. Little bit of Velcro on the bottom to stop it from sliding around. This is the shunt and it's got a mounting uh, screw here at the top. So I gotta put a little hole in the side of the toolbox uh, to secure it. Okay, the shunt is in, and now I'm going to cut a hole in the front for the meter. There is a wiring harness on the back side, so i got to make some room for that to pass through. Put some more Velcro on the back of this. Okay, we've got a hole in the front. I'm just going to feed the harness cable through and put some Velcro on the back of the monitor. Plug the other end of the harness uh, back into the shunt. And now we're ready to do some wiring. So I've got uh, this three foot piece of 10 gauge silicon parallel wire. It's really nice and flexible. So I've got my ring terminal crimp terminals ready and I'm gonna clamp them on for the battery and then split them open for the shunt and then come around to my binding posts. Go, go, strippers. So it's 5 16 for the battery and then 3 8 so an M8 and then an M10 for the shunt. You have to cut the negative and uh, clip it onto both sides. Okay, we got this in, and uh, these are heat shrink, so I'm gonna mount those down. And so I'm gonna split back uh, the negative right here so I can put the shunt in line. And it's good to try to get the terminals oriented the right way so that way you don't twist them when you put them on. Okay, so battery is here, shunt to here. And I'm gonna heat these and shrink these down. All right, I'm just gonna lightly screw these down on the terminals and the shunt. And I've got a little bit of extra, so I'm going to cut this off and put the ring terminals on for the binding posts. I'm using these uh, M8 binding posts uh, that will take a big ring terminal on the front and on the back. So again, I'm going to crimp some rings on the back and then drill them through. Heat them down. Now put the holes in. Now push the terminals through and put the ring on the bolt on the back side.
we're all set now. We just need to make the final power connections to the battery. There is a positive power wire that goes from the shunt to the positive terminal of the battery that comes with the shunt, little wire with a little ring. So you put those on top of each other and connect them to the battery terminals. And here's a top down of the connections to the battery. The negative coming over to the shunt block. The power wires coming down to the back side of the binding posts. And you can see the serial wire going from the shunt to the back side of the meter with that hole that I drilled earlier. And it fits just perfectly inside this $10 toolbox. So here is the shunt. The uh, battery is fully charged, so it shows 100%. Now you do need to configure some settings inside the shunt. So we push and hold here. You set the capacity, so this is a 50 amp hour. Full voltage is 14.4. Zero voltage is 10.8, power off is 10.8. You can set a low power alarm for whatever you want. I set it to five amp hours. And we're all set. You can see that there is a draw on the shunt. So just by having this plugged in, there is a very low draw just powering the shunt. Now let's go ahead and test it. You can see how the current draw meter works. These are some 12 volt uh, LED rope lights that I really, really like. I've used these during the Texas freeze. So let's clamp these on and see what the draw is. As you can see here, the current draw is about 1.7 amp or 1.8 amps, 25 watts. So, uh, we, and you've got a countdown timer, an approximate countdown timer. So I'll get about 27 hours of runtime on this battery on those lights. So that's, uh, that's pretty low and these things are about 10 feet long and they're very bright. I use them in the hallway. So now I can look and see approximately how much time I've got left uh, remaining uh, on these particular lights. I'll pull those off. You can see the draw go back down to essentially zero because that's just the, uh, the back light of the shunt. Put that back on and you can see the current draw off the lights. You may have noticed that I didn't put a master power switch on this box anywhere. I personally just disconnect the power leads on battery when I'm not using it. Thank you for, to Power Queen for sending uh, this equipment to me. There's some really great Christmas sales happening right now on the 50 and the 100 amp hour version of this battery. So check the links below and go to the Power Queen website. Uh, they have combination packages with a 10 amp charger, so you can juice this up nice and quick. But uh, here's a, a nice simple way to have a, a portable power system that you could take out for large DC equipment and have a meter built into it so that way you can see what your current draw and what your runtime is. Thanks and if you enjoyed this please drop a comment down below and give me a thumbs up. Thank you.